Hello everyone, welcome back to Mountaineer Firearms, and it's been kind of a rainy, dreary day, long day at work today, so I got home, figured I would just get out one of my favorite rifles and present it to you guys. You guys have seen my vintage hunting shotgun, and I thought today I would just show you my favorite vintage hunting rifle, or target rifle, or whatever you want to use it for. This is my all-around, this is my rifle. And this is a Winchester, model 70. And this is a pre-64 model. It's chambered in 30-06. And this is just an old classic Winchester. This is what they call a pre-64, made before 1964. And it's got the old steel butt plate, walnut stock. And this thing is just absolutely classic and beautiful. And this is my rifle. This is what I shoot when I go deer hunting or anything else, really. 30-06 will take care of about anything. It does have a little wear on the floor plate there. Just a little bit. Uh, not too bad. I actually don't mind the way that looks. Um, I like worn and used look on things. You guys have known that about this channel. And this is what handmade, or not handmade, but real precision manufacturing what they used to make back in the day. This is what they would look like. And I'll just turn it around and give you a look at this side. Other than that floor plate, this thing is in really good shape. This one was made in 1951. At, uh, as you can see there, Model 70 Winchester, 30-06 Springfield. Just a classic, just the way they used to make them. And I have a vintage Weaver K10 scope on here. Uh, the scope was made in about 53. And I wanted that on there kind of to be period correct. I put a period correct old military style sling on it. 1907 pattern sling they call them. And I think this thing has gorgeous wood. 1951 model. And I'll take the caps off of here show you the rest of the scope and it is a beautiful gun these old weaver scopes they're all steel blued just like the guns all steel and uh it's pretty close on the year 1953 scope on a 1951 rifle so that's pretty close and uh these things are gorgeous this is the old Mauser action with the big claw extractor. And these things are just absolutely smooth. This is what you call a three position safety on a Model 70 or a Mauser. And uh, all the way back is locked up. You can't pull the trigger, you can't move the bolt. Everything's locked up. If you put it in the middle, then you can move the bolt, but the gun will not fire, it's on safe. But you can cycle the bolt, cycle rounds through it. And these are so smooth. Just absolutely amazing hand-fitted rifles. This thing has a sweet trigger. I've done a little adjusting on it to get it where I like it, but it does have a sweet trigger. And we are going to take a few shots today. Um, not a whole lot, but I do have a few targets set up here. Uh, about 70 yards away. I had to move my targets back, and I've only got two steel targets that are rated for rifles. And I hope that if I hit them, if I hit them, the audio will come through good and you can actually tell. I know they're kind of far away. And I just wanted to get this rifle out and show it to you today. Uh, maybe another day we'll do something with multiple cameras and shoot at long distance and you can see the targets and see the hits and everything. But today I just wanted to get it out and take just a couple shots and let you look at this fine old classic American hunting rifle. Pre-64 Winchester Model 70. And I have some just regular old Remington core lock. These are 180 grain, 30-06. Pretty much your standard load, 150, 180, something like that grain. 165 grain is about standard for 30-06. I do load my own sometimes for hunting and target shooting. This thing shoots pretty good, so... If I miss with it today, it's my fault. 
Um, if you miss with a nice dialed in Model 70 Winchester, you usually can't blame the rifle. But uh, it holds five. You can get six in it, but I don't like to do that too much on a Mauser action. A Remington's a little different, but on a Mauser or a Winchester, I like to just put five in the magazine and close it up the way the claw extractors work. And we'll talk about that. But I'll take a, about five shots here. See if I can't bust them three jugs I've got there. This thing's got a good trigger. If I miss, it's my fault. I'll start with that white one on the left. sure does the job and I'll take care of that one on the right there yeah that'll sure do the work on it this thing sure shoots good take care of that top jug yeah 30 out six Winchester see if I can hit them two those are six inch or eight inch plates there. Let's see if I can hit them. One. There's two. I'll grab my brass later. There it is, Winchester Model 70. 30 out six has just a little bit of punch. Everybody knows that. It's a powerful cartridge. And the great thing about 30 out 6 is you can load them up. It has a little bit longer case. Uh, 308 is uh, pretty much the same ballistics when it comes to military loading, but when it comes to hunting loads and things like that, 30 out 6 can be quite a bit hotter, and you can load it quite a bit hotter than 308. So, uh, heavier bullets and things like that. You can take down elk, pretty much anything. Um, Jack O'Connor, uh, he was a 270 guy. Roger Rule, he was, wrote the book, The Rifleman's Rifle. That was written as a book about the Winchester Model 70, mainly the pre-64s. And uh, there are differences in a pre-64 and then something made 1964 and later. Something made 1963 and earlier. We'll have this old school Mauser action with the crawl extractor there. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just take the bolt out. And this is a claw extractor. You can see it goes all the way down the bolt. And uh, talk about that a minute. But you can see it spins around the bolt. And what happens is, when you, uh, this is what you call a controlled feed bolt action rifle instead of a push feed. And a controlled feed, when you are shoving the round in the chamber it'll actually grab it as it's shoving it in and it'll hold it right there so gravity doesn't take effect on the cartridge going into the rifle you don't even have to turn the bolt handle down and lock it in for it to grab the cartridge like on a remington 700 you have to lock it down for the claws to grab the cartridge and then pull it out with this remington or a winchester or a mauser type action you can just shove it in and it'll grab it already and pull it right back out controlled feed is what that's called and uh, has the big old lugs on it there nice bolt everything's machined all in one on these old ones especially on the pre-64s the uh, way the safety works and these things are just absolutely amazing um, right there is the button that you push to take the bolt out you just push that button and the bolt slides right on out and to put it back in you just line her up push her right back in and these things are absolutely slick and the three position safety is real nice and this old weaver scope i know you probably can't see it in the camera there ain't no way i could get that but they are beautiful old school scopes on an old school gun i've got weaver mounts and these are period correct older weaver mounts and they're the quick disconnects or whatever so i could still use my iron sights if i wanted to take the scope off and you'll notice another thing about pre-64s the uh, front sight isn't necessarily 
um, welded or brazed or made screwed on or anything like that to the barrel the front side is actually milled as part of the barrel that's what we're talking about when we talk about pre-64 and the quality that comes with that things like this a little attention to detail things that you just don't get on a newer gun the way the stocks are done this checkering is all hand done on the pre-64 on a post-64 it's either done with a machine or something like that and it was mainly the thing the differences was they had to cut costs in the, in the 60s the uh, remington model 700s came out and they were a push feed and really nice guns i like a remington 700 i'm not going to dog one but they were just cheaper to make and so winchester had to rethink their model 70s and stuff in order to keep selling them at a affordable price for the consumer it would that would be their arguing point anyway and so they had to change some things and just the receivers were made different the bolts were made different they went to a push feed like the remingtons and uh, just some different things the hand checkering on the stocks was done away with you don't get a metal butt plate no more different things but uh, that's what makes a pre-64 way more collectible to us guys that like things like that and i think that scope looks great on there i call this my carlos if anybody knows anything about military history or anything like that one of the most famous snipers ever was carlos hathcock he was a sniper in the vietnam war and he used a model 70 winchester and 30-06 it would have been a little different. It would have had a heavier barrel and the stock would have been just slightly different to accommodate the heavier barrel. And he had a, a big unardal scope on it. I want to say 20 power, but it might have been a, a 12 or an eight or 10. This is a 10 power, which a lot of people will say is a lot, but um, don't really hunt a lot. This is good enough to hunt with if I do decide to hunt, but I mainly like to target shoot, things like that at longer distances. And this rifle with this 10 power scope dialed in is amazing. It just, nothing fits me better personally. I've shot Remington's my whole life and then I finally decided to get me a Winchester because I always wanted one. And once I started looking for one, I realized this is my rifle. This is what I always wanted. It fits me like a glove. I don't think I could shoot a Remington as well as I shoot this gun. And uh, it's just absolutely amazing and beautiful. 1951. So, been around. I'm sure it's killed some deer. And uh, just a beautiful old rifle. I have five more rounds. And we'll put it on the half safe there. That way you can work the bolt, like I said. And still on safe and you know internal magazines it just the magazines are made where you just snap them down in there and they just kind of stagger with each other one on the other and that's how they go in and what i'll do here is i'll just put a couple in and i want to show you how a trap door works and i'm going to push this down so that my bolt will miss it and i'm not chambering around that way we're still safe and then what I'll even do is make sure that I put that on lock. But let's say you're out in the woods and you're hunting and you're done hunting for the day. You want to unload your rifle. Instead of just cycling the bolt five times, you can hit your trap door and let all your rounds out the bottom. And that's what a floor plate is for. That's what that does. You can see there's your magazine spring. That's what pushes the cartridges up as you cycle the bolt keeps pressure on them that just goes up in there and snaps shut and that's how that works on a rifle and these are just absolutely beautiful i found this vintage sling to go with it and i kind of even got lucky enough to get the patina on the scope and the patina on the sling and everything to match and since I'm talking about putting this together, this scope, I'd like to give a shout out because I found a nice website for guys like me that like vintage scopes on their vintage hunting rifles. It's called vintagescopes.com. 
and you can either take your old scope that you already have and send it into them and they'll refurbish the inside or redo the whole thing for different prices and they also have scopes that they have already refurbished or completely restored in stock that you can buy and that's how i got this one i actually have another k10 it's a couple years older than this one but it needs redone i need to send it back into them but this one came from vintage gun scopes which i think is pretty neat because it's hard to find nice old gun scope to match your vintage rifle sometimes so but we got about five more rounds here and we'll just load this thing up one more time take a few more shots swing in plates around with it 30 out six certainly doesn't have a trouble swinging plates around that's for sure but these things sure are smooth and slick i'll just see if i can Shoot these five times without missing for you guys. Take a notch to swing around with them. There it is, Winchester Model 70, 1951. In my opinion, a rifle, bolt action rifle, just don't get no better than that. I don't care what kind of new one you got, it might be better, but this is what's dear to my heart. I love these old vintage guns. They're just so nice. The hand fitting, the work, the craftsmanship that goes into them thing is just absolutely beautiful and uh, the new Winchesters are nice I'm sure they shoot just fine probably shoot a better group than this one maybe even but I don't know this one does pretty good I'm very proud to own it and I thank you guys for watching our video today make sure you like and subscribe and keep checking us out we'll keep trying to bring more guns to you nice old things just to look at and hope you keep tuning in thank you hope you have a good day